Dutch. I'm a vending now, machine for the jewelry. Yeah, I'm now on board with the idea. They are very effective, and the fact they have 30 bullets, you know what? It feels great. So I take it all back, and uh, I'm on board with Team Berettas. As uh, we get into it, Astralis, of course, this is not their pick, so they'll be starting on the CT side. They've got a smoke and a flashbang. The rest of the players with armor, and of course, there's dual Berettas for Blame F. And uh, in terms of the T setup, a couple of P250s, a couple of smokes, a couple of flashes, and we're heading towards B. No resistance so far. Yeah, decent probing. So far, as Grim's going to be flashed forward to initiate a peek, and well, he's looking for fights here, actively looking for fights, and nothing being obliged just yet. Smoke towards CT is going to apply a bit more pressure towards this B defense, but nobody rotating yet as Grim peers in, takes the jewel he was looking for, and JT can start working with this information. It is a passive stance on the site. How do they want to finish here? Both sides of the map are very, very tied on the defense here. Yeah, they've given them a lot of real estate. Middle and banana control. Edging their way up towards the A bomb side. Floppy. Got that P250 as well. Who will blink first? Who will break? As we send in the five-man attack, it's going to be the CTs defending here. Towards headshot we go, and they are being dealt out with buckets and spades here. Glade, Farlig, and Config join the fragging rags, and it's looking all too easy for Astralis here. Just Floppy remains. That slow, composed approach comes crumbling down around them, and uh, at this point is looking for any sort of souvenir kills, Shadow. You might even be knifed here. And there we have it. I'm disappointed. The Julies didn't get any action. They really do. They didn't get any at all. Yeah. What's going on? You hate to see it, but uh, I guess they're normally designed with the tighter choke points, and we didn't really see them enter with some of those. So uh, either way, no bomb plant comes through. Complexity only find one kill. You'd think with these players jumping down, the world would be their oyster, but uh, Config denies them any sort of access. Nice little flash there from Glaive, and confirms our final kill in towards the smoke. That was floppy. Unable to make that P250 sing. So Desert Eagles across the board for complexity. Bare bones in terms of utility. They've got so, four smokes, a couple of flashes, and they'll explore their options towards Banana once again. It's Grim looking for the opening one tap, but he's been flashed off. Config does spot him, but uh, no damage inflicted. Uh, well, the biggest issue right now, I think, is the utility here and the fact they've been peppered up through the smoke. JT down to 11 points of health. There's more damage to come their way. Flashes continue to bombard as logs and the broom position will be their hidey hole for now. And you can see the response from Grim trying to alleviate some pressure top mid. If they're going to be playing this aggressive, what's going on is we do see a nice off the top of the skybox incendiary there to crowd control mid. And Farley, he's got back out. Yeah, they've retaken the position. So now just making sure that the terrorists aren't waiting on the other side in full formation. They're actually probing towards B this time. And Blame F more than happy to stand tall and fight back. He should better get the first one, no problem. The second, not so much. The Apex will confirm their second kill, but uh, does he decide to fall back? Indeed he does. So he's going to be jumping up towards first oranges, inviting them in towards the B bomb site where he'll back up from Config, who's waiting in CT spawn. 2-2 two -two split's nice here, right? The fact that they do still have Glaive top mid. He has right. the buddy system of Farley not too far behind. And now Config and Zip just have to deal the dud hand now to Complexity. The step out is perfect from Config. The smoke is even better. The bomb is going to be on the other side. He didn't even need the smoke. Didn't even throw it. He just considered, I'll oh, save this 300 bucks. A beautiful round, and now it is going to be complexity. Very Long good. time that, since then. That's a very good point. I remember saying that in what 2018. <laughs> They're saying, well, they've they've kind of uh, redesigned the banana utility. They've they've shown us the power of the AG grenade. I don't think really anyone spoke about AG grenades until Astralis showed us how potent they could be, right? Precisely. And we were having a bit of a uh, utility damage conversation last week with NIP, just how poor some of their situation right. was. Right. Uh, able to reflect there, and but really, it's only become a. Big talking flash. point. It is a good flash, but this is even better. Just ooh, oh, straight into the blender. Fang somehow gets two P250 kills. Now, the question is, what can they scavenge off the ground here? They've already been cottoned off. You can see the push down banana here. There's going to be so much pressure from Blame F. They just want to make sure they don't give away any more casualties right now. And Blame is going to confirm that alongside a zip. So a great little lockdown. All good in the hood. No dramas there. And a 3-0 start. But a couple of shaky moments. But this is where we really get to see what this complexity team is bringing to the table. Well, the new signing, the new sniper. Paul Zerg will bring out his favorite weapon for the first gun round here, AWP in hand. A couple of kills there for Fang as well. Um, one of the key fraggers of this team, I would say. Chad, looking for him to pop off. They're going to stand a chance in this best of three. Yeah, I, I think Fang, Grim, and Floppy, we always just want to see a little bit more. You know, one sure. of these guys needs to separate themselves from the rest and, and not in a, in a way that, you know, they want to leave their teammates in the dust. Just they need a superstar, but here we go. Seeing stars, Astralis. Throw on blows down for Nana. JT with the AK out. In-game leader action here as JT will dispatch a glaive. Config with the trade back. But look at the space. This is a huge gap. And they're not ready for the orb. Hauser, perfect play. That is great. It's Config now. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. The 
Bombs in front of him, though, however. Thang on very low HP, needs to be incredibly careful here. If Config gets both of these kills, they're in a lot of trouble. Does the swing come out? Apparently not. Config changes his efforts here, but surely going to be dead momentarily. How oh, is he still alive? There's no not pressure coming out of Banana at all. Please go down. <laughs> <laughs> that was looking a little bit troublesome there for the complexity side, but you're right. They, might, they spot that gap, they capitalize upon it, and what a great shot there from Halzerk. Very confident. You need to be able to identify if it's a free banana hold early, exactly like that. And we do see these players making heads-up maneuvers now. If you're seeing a three play over towards banana, then there's usually going to be a gap towards that long side. If there's not, there might be a gap towards apartments or short. And uh, here, just able to pip that perfectly. So great work for Complexity to get on the board early. I dare say that is a bit of a bonus situation, though. Bear in mind, we had the MP9 coming into that round. They're trying to solidify their foundations. They win that with a bit of a gambit towards the bottom of Banana, sacrificing a couple of players, perhaps. That would be amazing. It's not the end of the world. It didn't work out. They're going to save the AWP and the M4 here. A little bit sketchy from Complexity to close things out. Config surviving for way too long. But the headline is four players surviving the first gun round. Hold that thought. Has a chance here. Oh. Grenade will find a kill at least. Oh, 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 it looked like the grenade was following there for a second. Yeah. Blame fortunate to stay alive. And that was an important save. You can see there he doesn't have a whole lot of cash to his name if he had to rebuy. But smiles already out of Fang and Co. So good to see Complexity in good spirits here on Maltese Shores. We know Graham Pitt is with them as well. We've seen him. That's true. Looking forward to seeing more of him. He did say he joined us in the commentary booth at one point. We yeah. have got a third microphone. So we might have to get Maybe him Maybe not for the here. first game. But uh, as the week develops, I think. we'll see how they're playing. Because if it's right. an absolute uh, <laughs> bit of a shocker, then he might want to stay away. But if things are looking True. all right, maybe we bring him in. Well, this is looking all right. Barley actually pushing towards the apartments there with the AWP. Lots of information, but it's all for not if he goes down. Definitely doesn't floppy. Doesn't predict it. Another HE coming through. Luckily, doesn't connect as well. Command advantage. And Zipex will just be deploying that smoke back to his teammate to allow him to buy some more time. He's using the pixel. Peak, and uh, there's a the smoke. JT's effort. Oh. I was about to say, what? It's actually a terrible oh. smoke as well. He lines them up, knocks them down, and that's the B bomb side wide open. A couple of mistakes there. Yeah, bringing sexy back early here, Mr. JT. He's in the building. <laughs> nice nade. Glaive knows that he needs to stay quick on this, and Config's actually found a freebie. So hold up a second. This one's got more to be said. He wants to get on this smoke, but it's in the flames. They're going to be able to stall out this plant for now, and. Valley's opening, maybe it's not all for naught. He's setting up a flash, he's gone back towards the well. Yeah, it's gonna be a hell of a flash as well. Make a wish. We'll see whether it connects. Glaive. Emo Molly here. Oh, that's towards Emo, you're right. So, here comes a flashbang, there attempts. JT feeling the heat, he'll have to fight in the open. He's hit a couple of bangers so far. Can he keep it up? He absolutely can. That's his third kill of the round. It looks like it could be enough. Down to the two on two. Config retaken from Coffins. They have no kit though, Chad. It's a bit of an issue here. Finally needs a pep in the step. They're both going to take the swing. This is Config's chance to initiate, and he can't get it done. Gribble win the round. Might even want to get that all for Halzerk, but great stuff. JT, the man in the middle of your screen, the hero of this one, the in-game leader. Banana action and traction yet again. Yeah, huge shout-out to him. One of the players that doesn't get many mentions. He's not one of the big fraggers, but my God, does he get the job done there? You have to say it looked a bit clumsy, Chad, there from the CT. The fact that smoke was so poor, um, you could see, like, it was a great job on JT, but then this opportunity arises. He doesn't necessarily see him, but he's got all the reference points he needs to get a nice, educated guess towards CT spawn. A little bit disappointing from Astralis there. And you can see that uh, look on the face says it all from the big man. M4, four blame. And uh, an eco elsewhere. P250s, 5'7, no armor. Hoping they can make something of the round. Config's actually very lucky to have gotten through that far without taking any spam damage, and Floppy might not clear this corner. Uh, exactly. Okay. So the spam's That's meant huge. to deal with that. The fact that Config's got in and got out undetected here. The execute is coming his way. They're actually wrapping long into Glaive, the P250. Very aggressive, but JT again. He's been putting in the deathmatch hours, it seems. Yeah, he looks sharp. So round six, it was looking like a lock-in for complexity, but now a few question marks around him. Three rifles in total, though. Config with the AK-47, still healthy as you like, 100 HP. And they're contained to the pit for now. They need to find access towards the A bomb site. Can they get it? Zipex trying to provide the, the covering fire, but with no armor, he takes a lot of damage there. Oh, and the smoke's under fade. This Config's chance. The bomb would have been at his feet, but Grim clotheslines him, and maybe that's enough. They really want to consider looking in here. The elbow spotted, the shot taken, and just blame the man who saved, saving again. Yeah, this was the only rifle purchased, actually. It didn't do any damage so far. It's the P250s of Config. 
and Zipex finding frags, but it's ultimately well handled. A hero M4. Why? I don't understand the thought process behind this. On the T side, you kind of get it with the AKs, right? Because you're looking to get a bomb plant. You can't really find the same sort of result with an M4 on the CT Not like side. a player like Blame either, right? No. You, if it's someone a bit more agile and mobile, like a Config or a Glaive, sure. You, you do turn to Blame to, well, get the majority of the firepower here. It's actually on the tail of two, so some kills wouldn't be too bad. Steps around the corner, takes the first, and can't get the second, so sharp shooting and the AWP retained again, so good stuff. If he had got both those players and denied the AWP, that would have been really worth it. Ultimately, this loses the M4 towards the end. Is JT once again getting the job done. This is a fantastic shot from Grimm. Solidified the round, and Helzerg watching the flanks. And uh, you can see they're, they're composed still. Haven't uh, lost their heads just yet. We'll see a uh, more subdued Astralis, though. Well, now Blame's operating with an MP9. Yeah, yeah it's so not ideal, it's, is it? It's not what we want in the early stages here for the Danes. It wasn't fantastic in that uh, Series 1 for the Danes, so He's, hopefully Series 2 is better. He plays Banana. It's uh, one of the Tizer areas of the map if you get towards Sandbags or something like that, but uh, you're right on the back foot here for sure, and the pace is just increasing as Fang isn't going to force the issue here, but a great shot from Glaive will shut him down. An equal exchange, though, you have to say, in these sort of scenarios, we are spread thin with utility and firepower. Four and four, you give it to complexity. And look at the radar. Everybody bearing down on Comfy. He was the lone defender of the A site because, once again, it was a three-man B site from Astralis. It should be a save call. How are you meant to get back into this unless you find a free kill as they cross the archway here and they've been able to get across with safe passage? You have to save. You can't justify going for a round like this. I'm liking this pace from complexity. This is much different than what we've seen in the ESL Pro League so far in Inferno. It's normally quite slow paced, focused towards Banana, establishing map control, but complexity are spotting gaps, tucking tail, going in together, trading out frags, and detecting open bomb sites. This is looking very, very promising. Yeah, punishing this. And I I'm loving the, the pep of the step with the flashes up top mid. Yeah, right. They, they sw Look, Glaive swung out to cover Config there, but Config was blind, and they were they were hunting him down. So a good swing from Glaive to at least try and draw something back, but really offered up his life, gets traded, then Config the only man on the site. So right now, Complexity are conditioning Astralis into making sure they have to start in a standard 3-2 defense, right? Traditionally with Inferno, of all the years this map's been played, you would be starting two players towards B and three players towards A, right? That's, that's how you'd be right. finding it. But Obviously, in the evolution of this game and how good teams have been at taking Banana with Util, right, we see something heroic in the start. I've seen them start. Five players top Banana lobbing Util down just to get Banana control and then rotate back towards A. We know that there's a lot more variance in the play, but what not really being up to, uh, up to snuff, so that's a problem in itself. But they are going to go with another 3-2 split with the Lion Show, the defenses towards B. They might have to force the issue here, so through the fire, through the flames, and into a fight. They've got something out of it this time round, as Config and Zip will both produce. It's a scrappy affair, but uh, ultimately it will be Astralis coming out on top as they claim Banana. They'll be able to upgrade some weapons as well, find uh, an AK-47 or two. A shot from Halzerk to keep things competitive at least. Found Zipex. Playing left for rotate. Feeling like they've got full control of the banana area. Config left to his own devices. He's got a smoke as well. I believe he'll probably have some utility behind him as well. This can go so wrong in so many ways. Because sure they have a crossfire on top mid here. That's all good. But we can see they've regrouped for bottom banana. If they're able to deal with Config, they can get into the site. Yeah. They might just contact play it as well for no utility. And he is not in a position to get multiple kills. That's kind of one and done. That will not do. Well, there's the first and the second. So, well, I take it all back, Chad. It's a multi-kill position sometimes, and you can get three headshots if you try your best. But it's always a temperature check with Config, right? This is the thing. This guy is inconsistent. That's Config's brand, being inconsistent. He can, you know, in the, in the game, in the first, I don't know, six or seven rounds, have 15 kills, or he can have about three. There's a disparity with Config when he enters the server, but if he's on form and hitting shots exactly like this tight little three-piece, then I think you need to be worried if you're Complexity, because Config can be a monster when he's having a good day. Sigh of relief from Config there. He delivers on all fronts as we go four and four. Round nine coming up here. The bombardment of utility towards Banana continues. No one to receive it, though. Bomb down in T-Spawn for now as we go into more traditional play on the T-side. Blame F confirms that the bottom of Banana is clear. Got floppy towards the apartments as well. So, yeah, very standard round here for now. Smoke towards the arch side. Grim will deploy that. And we've got Harley underneath the atrium position here. Very WB. committed. Flash won't quite get him, but can he connect the dots with the orb shots? We'll see. No, definitely not. That's actually gone horribly wrong. Yeah, and the molly that they threw for his position also didn't go off it detonated in the sky so he actually was given a second chance there 
the advantage. He should have been mollied out of position. So. And it, it wasn't like that was a difficult shot, unfortunately. That's a pretty standard one. Sure, you're probably only good for one in that spot, but you, you need to be nailing that first one. Yeah, definitely needed one in that type of committed position. Now, JT can start to turn the screws here. It's going to be still zip over towards B with Blame, who's ahead of the half wall. Be anybody over towards the logs just yet. It's going to be the deep. Nice work. Sandri just to clear out close, and that might be enough here. Scratching their head with 30 seconds left. They have to go into this passive stance. Glaive and Config bunker down in towards the pit. Oh, and even time with the one-way floppy. What are you meant to do? Jump out, not cleared, not heard. Uh, now there's some issues. It's just the one man in the pit being peppered away. There's flashes to hold him at bay. And over the top comes Grim. He's going to put Glaive in a grave. Oh, oh he's Glaive! Not. He's fighting back here valiantly, trying to buy time, but they'll eventually find him. And, oh, can he coast things out? He absolutely can. A captain's performance there from Glaive. I don't know how he survives for so long there, Chad. How did he have the premonition that the player from the graveyard would be above him? He nails the shot. It just was no intensity on dealing with that position, right? Once they jump in and they clear out that of config, needed a few more bodies to be thrown in Glaive's direction. But you have to credit Blame. Those two nice kills being in front of the half wall, not a common clear. And this is the shot we were talking about. So the wide swing, given some of that North American sass right there with a the wide swing right in your face. None of those naughty jiggles. Absolutely true. Looked like Glaive was absolutely done for there, but uh, he fights back, stands on his feet, and it's down to an eco once again. As we'll see the initial shot come through, it's Grim. Takes the bullet to the thigh, down to 10 HP. Oh, they love this established banana control on the CT side. You don't see much of that these days. I do like the fact that they also have Zip and Blame paired up, because both are more of the passive elements in this okay. roster, but one of them has to be aggressive in banana. And let's be honest about things. Blame is a, he is a beast. Ooh, yeah. That flash is actually well-timed and well-positioned. It's going to hold JT's vision for now, and Blame gets another multi-kill towards the base of banana. Right, I think this is the same. I could mention any hard lurker in any team, and you could go, at one point, yeah, they probably were baiting, but I think Blame in Astralis, he's been putting everybody on his back and trying to march uphill, and yeah. he's been the one consistently putting up performances. If Config can be consistent, right, and that's the problem. How long can we keep saying that for? Right, if Config can be consistent, that's a real conversation point. And then I think it's a, uh, about some of these more when, supplementary members. When Config drops off, he really drops off. That's, that's, that, yeah. that's a real problem. It's either one or the other. I think you're dead on there. For this team to have any sort of future to replicate the past, that, that really has to happen. You're dead on. But uh, here we go then. 6-4, Astralis fighting back after giving up four rounds in a row. They did win the pistol, but things starting to look a little bit greener for them here. As we'll see, Farley with the incendiary down towards T-steps, and Astralis has to be said to be battling two for nail to gain control of Banana each and every time. So they'll throw the initial utility here, but not pushing forward. Good damage towards the in-game leader, JT. And as you can see, they're actually rotating back. They sent four players there at the very start of the round. Just to use that initial utility, and they'll still have grenades left over to fight back with in the mid stages. Yeah, this is going to be really important here. As, wow, just stepping out. Cops right. the flash. Zip's going to give one over. Blame can stall them for now. The rotation point of Glaive coming back, but do they want to take the fight or do they want to sit on their haunches? Full of shots through, not too far off. Could have been deadly. Well, it comes down to this A hold again, and I hate to say it, Farley, you're going to be called upon once more. All congregating top middle here. They're out of nades. It's just the one smoke on JT. So they're going to have to do this one dry. Farley peers in. And he gets a spot. So the full alert is there. And so is the rotation. Everybody from Astralis to party on A. No one connecting the shots so far. Glaive will finally land one. But it's still a four and three advantage towards complexity. Do they go towards spawn? Do they try and challenge that position? It looks like yes is the answer. Blame F though takes care of him. No problem whatsoever. Three on three. 35 seconds. They're committing towards the A side. JT, low HP, will take the bait. And it's floppy to hit. A tremendous shot there. Farley needs a double, but only good for one. And that's leaving Blame F, as we've mentioned a few times here. He'll be holding towards the banana area. He's in a two versus one with the kit, but no utility. But still, worth a go. He's rerouted, right? They knew it was over towards Arch. This is the thing. Complexity. As soon as they saw Glaive and Blame's name in the feed, they know that they've made the wrong call on the site here. The penny drops, but they've been able to trade into this. Blame would have to pull off a massive clutch here. JT, very susceptible. Might have to keep his head tucked until the first fight is taken. And he swings out, gives Blame the jewel. Now he just has to isolate the last flight. It's floppy. He's on the box, and Blame's going to get it done. That was easy.
Easy as you like. Apparently, he walks in and knows exactly where they are. They're not really in a position to crossfire effectively. If he comes from that quad side, they're in a lot of trouble, and JT makes himself known. 10 HP gets dropped, and then Floppy, the free fire comes in. Do you want to know why I think they were so concerned about rotating out of those positions? It was because Blame had showed himself an arch right. not that much before they had taken the side kills, right? They killed players on the site. Blame gets a kill over towards Arch on Grim. Like, well, he must be around. Why would he go all the way back towards B? So just the time was the killer there for complexity. Yeah, the post plant before here, something like Maybe a, a B piece. rush. They got a back 10 going on Halzak first. Let's have a look. Bombs over towards second mid, so cancel the B call. Bali looking to find that aggression and not connecting once again, but does spot them at least and maybe saw a rifle, confirms a buys come through. If at first you don't succeed. Keep going. <laughs> You're giving it another go. And uh, good grenades. JT will be removed. Just down to 20 points of health, but it's the apartment's pop. Chad, what do you think about this? I think that the MAC-10 is not there, so I hate it. That's true. Yeah, that's um, a good point. Let's give it a go, shall we? Out we go. Falling into place. As that's the bomb. We'll take that one on the balcony. Thank you. Well, now they're going to get needed to hell and back. Smoked out of position. You're right there. That, that was the worst weapon for the job. You want the, the MAC-10s up front. Yep. Just to take the crosshairs away, allowing the AK-47s to get the precision kills. But... Uh, that's going to be a walk in the park for Astralis. One minute remaining and a five versus three, but uh, not much help between Grimm and JT themselves. This is a good look from Astralis, right? It's, it's hard to kind of pin where these teams were at. We know there's a whole bunch of names in this group who we haven't seen play, Mao's being one of them. We obviously have Ents coming later today. We throw Heat as a bit more of an unknown quantity into the mix as well. So this group is up for question, but Astralis are already giving us some answers and everybody's staying alive. Yeah, you're absolutely right there. Now, was the force buy, bear in mind, and it's round number 13. It has to be a partial buy at this point. They've got maximum loss bonus after giving up five in a row. Convig had all the time in the world to deal with that, it seems, and then Glaive throwing them down. Wasn't too much press. He's not even blind, Chad. Where are the flashbangs? Yeah, because Convig looking up at the sky, he sees the first one, he dodges that. I think yeah. it did more to the teammates of Complexity than it did to of Astralis. So some worrying signs here because Complexity with the flashes is normally the talking point. Absolutely. JT and his teams, his squads normally have very, very effective flashes. But uh, his blame, uh, speaking of effectiveness, this will do nicely. A triple spray down towards T-Steps. Harley yet to really connect one of these shots, Chad. I, I will be honest. It's a difficult one, that one, but there's just lots of missed opportunities we're seeing. But yeah, we, we kind of want Farley to be the new hooksy, right? You know, like, let's get, let's get a hit some shots, let's get everyone celebrating, let's yeah. get some copy pastas. Let's get it all going. <laughs> let's get it all going. Let's start with the fanfare. Fuel the meme machine. Everyone has a good time, and the people in chat love it here, but th this actually has turned into a little bit of a predicament right now for Astralis. Farley low. Bang two. Yeah, you're right. And it's JT. He's still alive, so I'm believing. He has hit some bangers so far, and there's an AK-47, an incendiary grenade. That will do nicely. Got his name all over it. Yeah. Maybe literally. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm actually paying attention to see if it is his AK. It's not. It's Fangs. But that would have been cool if I was right. JT with the flash. And he's got a smoke as well. He's actually found everything he needs to make something of this round. They'll go back towards B. Who's defending? Mr. Zipex. If he goes down, the round is up in the air. Call it even. They need to get at least one here. Should be at this one, no problem. And does considerable damage towards JT. Should be round concluded, but Glaive, backed up by Farley, he's got 10 HP, bear in mind. It's still definitely possible. Glaive really needs to consider his options. Uh, that would do. Uh, that would if do he planned though. a default, he would have got away with it. But it was all those pesky kids and Glaive. <laughs> in the... Uh, they would have got away with it. In, what, was, what was the Scooby mo... It wasn't the... What was the name of the mystery van? Uh, the mystery machine, I think. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. That's one reference I could help you out with. Scooby Doo references, Chad. I got you all day long. Where are you? Anything are? anime related or Australian music based? I can't help you out too much. But that's I've got under lock and key. All right, Scooby Doo. We'll see if we get a couple more references in. But looking a bit shaggy here is complexity. Oh, continues. Ali aggressive again. The run boost. Not too bad as they will test their luck, dip their toes to the top of the water, and it's too hot for Fang. The nade narrowly misses out on the target as well. That could have been a kill. Surrounded by smoke and flames, Blame F looks like he's poised to have another go at this one. R4 grenade does a ton of damage in true Astralis fashion. Great transfer, though. Doesn't quite connect, though, but good information, Gabby. They've still got two players here. Config will drop the incendiary, just buying some time, enables them to establish this setup. We have got Zipex 
Boosted on the first boxes here. Looks like they're aware of multiple players. You can see that spam over towards Coffins as well. So they can see the trajectory of some of that util. Spamming towards Coffins, telling it too. This A setup again. Passive stance. They do have the early information on Farley here on the big green. Floppy's going to... Get some grenades down. Uh, utility over, so we'll take that flash. Thank you very much. And Perfect. Slave repositioning in time. Long smoke. Ooh, this is not... This is Farley's chance, Henry. This is really oh, his chance here. He's been scared by the smokes in the sky. Maybe thought it was a flash or two. He's going to peek back out. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Sends them towards the short side. And a sprint from Farley. Beautiful stuff. Silver platter now for Astralis as the Let's repeats go. keep coming. And the Farley story has another tail as Floppy. He's got to have his between the legs. Tuck on back and get on out of dodge. That's what we're looking for. Just hitting the shots that really count. Nothing too flashy. No flicks required. Good positioning. Bides his time. Hits all three. And Floppy, he can't do anything with this. Just seven seconds remaining. So he'll fall back towards T-Spawn. Uh, he does a little bit of damage there. But AK-47 has recovered for Astralis. I dare say they'll go they find the AWP. I guess they have 10k, 9k. You're right. They so do, yeah. 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 It's the last round coming up. So yeah, keep the AK-47s. Good point. So everybody will be able to buy at least on one side of the service of question marks on the other. Maybe it needs to be another Halzerk Mac 10. But uh, great showing from Blame here. We're getting exactly what we expect from him. He's got 17 kills. Config 14, 13 for Glaive, 9 for Farley, and 6 for Zip. I'll take a quick look at some of the utility damage. Config's got 300 utility damage nice. so far. Blame's almost got 200, 100 for the other three or thereabouts. So uh, everything looking fantastic so far. Oh, um, oh dear. So far. Well, that's not the star they were looking for in round number 15. A fantastic shot from Holzerk, and same story for Grim. He doesn't quite get the kill with the Galil, but uh, gets the dink in and sends Glaive packing. You can see licking his wounds as they try and recover the AWP, and Holzerk's actually got it. Nice work. That's a huge upgrade. Yeah, the fact that he was able to get that frag and that. And he deserves it as well. It's it his kill. Yeah, no one taking his AWP, but I guess the biggest question is, what is JT going to call here? Because Astralis are showing a little bit of heroic right now. Very reactive on the rotations. They've completely evacuated the B bomb site yeah. here. They're all bunkered down over towards the B side of things. Here was the run boost. Run ah, boost as well. Yeah, that was uh, not the roller coaster he was buying tickets for. But they've already searched out all this information. They were happy to put config for because they had so many bodies there. He's called boiler clear, halls clear, top mids clear, and now they have three players on B. What a rotation from Astralis. Still a lot of work to be done here though. But play math. The captain boosted up. We'll see whether he can spray them down here. Good opportunity. They haven't checked it, but there will be the reply very quickly there. And it looks like Complexity have done enough. Three versus two. They isolate the player towards Coffins. Zipex will throw a grenade in return, but the bomb will go down no problem. Config coming in from the flanks here towards Banana. They've established a nice setup here. Great shot from Holzerk. That shuts it down. And presumably the round is over, but Config's onto something here. He's got himself an incendiary. We'll lob it in towards new boxes. The flashman will come over as well. Has to hit this first shot cleanly. Oh, the pre-fire taps here. Looking for these heads. The hardest part is the AWP on the close left. He knows it has to be somewhere nearby, and Hauser will strike. 10 Fusty now on the CT side. Yeah, they should have a slightly better chance. We'll see Blame for the P250. Oh. And he is doing unspeakable things with the pistol there. JT just hunting for information. Gets a lot more than he bargained for, I would say. As we go back to a 4-4, four four, there is a kill in response. That's from Grim. Floppy holds towards B, and he is alone for now. Holzer rotating in. They've actually gained so much real estate here towards B. There's nothing Floppy can do. Nothing at all here. Has to hope he gets greeted ahead. He, he spots one. I love the little movement right there to bait him across. But look at the totem stack on the coffins. They're going to be able to go, well, two for one in favor of complexity here. And Grim no. hits a banger. It's just config. He's coming from CT spawn. He's been identified as well. They just need to defuse the bomb. It's going to be a 10-second defuse. Config's knocked off the first. The tree kill at the neck. Oh, he's got no. time for this. He's got time to push in and deny. He thinks he's faking it. He's going to sit it. And in his face, Floppy wins oh. the round. But only just for complexity here. Walls of steel for Ooh. Floppy. Convict could have just ran around the corner and taken it for free, essentially. But he doesn't trust his judgment. And there we have it. The 10-second defuse prevails. And it will be complexity answering back. The bomb was planted, four kills found. You can almost guarantee a buy and response here. Config has an AK with head armor. Yeah. Uh, look at the hang time on this. Blame, what a shot that was onto JT. They're trying to pin him down. No, you guys are locked in banana with me, not the other way around. And Config doing a lot of damage here, but you can see this is this is like bluffing in poker at this point, yeah. right? It's like, yeah, do you really believe what I've got? You know, I, I, I'm acting like I got a pocket aces. Damn. Well, 
A very exciting finish to the first round of the second half. JT, well, he said he likes to be tricky with the grenades and the flashbang does a perfect example of it. Flashbang completely destroys config there and nothing can be done. They have to just push the issue towards middle now. Yeah, that was a great effort. As a team there, they swung out, they took the fight, they get the kill. They isolate Banana, the rotation freed up back towards the site. Top mid is the biggest issue now and slinks into place with the MP9 perfectly. The Famous will be the next to take contact towards long. And the jiggle should be enough. The dink just hide. Pressure is coming, but so the rotation can too. Oh, and Farley looking for a gap here. Hasn't blown us away on the AWP, but a move like this could change the tide of this. With the dink, they're right back in this round. Alzok has to fall back, and it's actually towards B they seem to be adjusting to. Maybe a bit of a banana split here. But they have to know that Farley's through. And, and Floppy is, you can see already, looking towards that play. Now, if they smoke CT and Coffins, True. JT's going to have to turn around and then Farley can activate. But do they go first or they let Farley play? 35 seconds, these are the questions. Well, here we go. Glaive to lead the charge, as you would expect. And Floppy just trying to be a nuisance here towards a new box. He's actually doing a very good job of holding them off for now, but it's back to a three on three. A deep smoke. They have very to deep banana. Smoke. Yeah, well, they will be. Absolutely true. One flashbang between them, but it's incredible pace. The flash will have to go over. They'll send the rifles in. And we have got Farley very low indeed. There's a the flashbang. Here comes the swing. Can they capitalize upon this? They once had the advantage, but it's slipping away from them now. Blame F brings the round ever closer in favor of Astralis. Grim and Fang remain. They do not have a kick currently. They're doing damage here towards the coffins, but time is of the essence. Past the halfway point now. It looks like their chances are running thin, Chad. Might just have to give in. Fang waits patiently towards the pool position, but Farlik surely takes him down. Got the information here, and there it is. That's going to conclude. And a very good job from Astralis. Spotting that gap towards CT spawn. The banana split comes in eventually. Not the cleanest finish, but they get the job done. Yeah, it was handled. Like, Farley did what he needed to do. You can yeah. see how awkward it got. And I was a little bit concerned with Glaive's forward presence, but it, it, it drew the fight and it gave Farley that little window. So here it is. JT drops down because his boost gets identified. He knows that he can't stay in that position. They can then focus fire towards the back of the site. And as soon as Fang makes it across the pool, there's no way forward. So Floppy with a bit of frustration there. That's not how they wanted to stick the landing. 11 to 6, the buy in, and yeah, this is going to be rough around the edges. Winnable. But, Winnable, uh, sure. 4B. 4B, one rifle, Grim with the utility as well. I want to give that out to the teammates, and there it is. Definitely want to create that reservoir of utility towards the first oranges. They're actually going to fall back. So they've left floppy of all those grenades. And hopefully he can suggest there's more players than there actually is. But uh, it might not matter. It's the MAC-10 leading the charge here. <gasps> it's actually looking very good. The CTs have done tremendous work here. They'll have the fire push forward through oh, the no. flames, but it's actually looking like they've taken the round here. Just Farley remaining, and uh, he'll be detected as well. So a bit too much pace there from Astralis, perhaps, Chad. I don't know what they were reacting to, but it was very fortunate for complexity with the re-rotation in Arch. They couldn't have found a better timing on that mid -push. They were just setting up. They were just uh, enabling Floppy to have all those grenades towards B, and they will come back and set up towards eight. It's caught everyone top of middle. They got very lucky there. Lucky for sure, but they'll take it all day long. Well, four of consistent buys from both of these teams. Farley this time is going to be conceding so he can get the AWP out. That's what Halzerk was doing in the previous. So we've got some Deagles, some Tech Nines, and Light Util, but this is looking much better for complexity. You saw Floppy in the previous looking like, man, we really stuffed up. And this time around, he's like, well, <laughs> we're actually gods. That actually probably worked out better for us in a way. But uh, here we have it. As you mentioned, the four spy. Strala still with the 11-7 lead, but uh, round number 19, certainly not in their favor. Speculative shots through the smoke from Convig, nothing connecting just yet. A passive setup here, to say the very least, for complexity. They've got two players towards the pit, also towards the library. They're not giving anything away, not even investigating. Just let them have top of middle. Just reeks of an apps pop, doesn't it? With the amount of smokes they have, they could smoke off the bike, do a moto smoke and a long smoke. They don't have HEs like we enjoyed FTW doing. That was one right. of their highlight strategies. But there's the long smoke. Board squad we go. Flashes to be deployed, but a good response so far for complexity. Plugging the holes, ensuring the T's gone flood on towards the bomb site. It's all about Fang right now. Really nice position, but uh -oh, Henry. not the best shot. Still absolutely fine. He's got a plan towards the app to deal with. A great grenade. That makes up for it. Grim will join him in towards the pit, and it looks like everything's under control. I said that with baited breath. Zipex will pull one back. And now the B250 oh. starting to make things very interesting. Zipex, clutch minister. A day's gone by. Now in a two versus one. A winnable one as well. Low HP, 
towards Halzerk and oh, oh. fortunately for him, he has to reload. The full defuse will come in, Jad. No chance now. A valiant effort, but uh, unfortunately doesn't really work out for him. If he wins that first fight, Halzerk's so low, and even though it's not planned for him, it's likely Zip could win that. So a very close one indeed. Remember, that was a force, but the force by wars will come to rest. No more issues with trade in the Galactic Cup. Nice Nathan Fang. Well, like, missed the first few shots. They were difficult ones, to be fair, but ensured the round was under control. That was almost like jumping on the grenade for your teammates, because yeah, that grenade, if it went deeper helmet. in the site, I could only imagine how much residual damage <laughs> that would have done to the three players clustered up. So, the bomb was planted at least, but that force by ultimately led to defeat. So, Desert Eagles PD 50s, couple of flashes, and they'll hold up, just bleed out some utility from the CT side, and maybe yield some headshots, as uh, that's a remarkable shot from Config. There's one thing we tend not to do against an eco, and that's pick T-stairs with an AWP. True. Fair enough. I know that it sounds crazy. The AWP should always beat the pistols, but it's a deagle, guys. It's a deagle. One of the most iconic guns in the history of the game. It's crazy. Watch what it does. It, 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 this is the showcase. Don't give him another one. You guys want a deagle? It only costs 700 bucks. Get one of your own. Get yourself an AWP. Get a couple more deagle kills. No. Pick up that AWP and kill everybody, because right now, Config looking to destroy the hopes and dreams. The Force by Wars were meant to be over. This wasn't even a Force by chat. This is just P250 deagle, no armor. What a uh, showcase for the $700 hand cannon right there. Oh. Pick one up every day of the week. No dynamic pricing here. We've been done with that. That's huge. You shouldn't punch monitors, all right? They're, they're no. very expensive. Yes, that's fair. Be kind to your monitors, everybody. Punch the desk. Yeah, the desk aren't going to hit back. And does it doesn't... Well, actually, I don't know how much a desk costs, but I'd say the monitor has more value. Um, so they can just waltz into B, guys. Uh, so if you're at home, you want to get involved in the conversation, use the hashtag ESL Pro League, tag at Henry G CSGO, at Sponge, S-P-U-N-J, and let us know what you're up to on this Wednesday afternoon at approximately 4.44 CEST. Maybe you're watching from somewhere else in the world, like Maybe. America or yeah. Canada. Could be happening. Maybe uh, the Down Under. Could also be possible. Maybe some South African fans out there. That's true. Considering they've got a couple of representations there in the form of the coach and, of course, JT. Coach called TC, I believe. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Two letter lab. names. They're all, all the rage in South Africa, I've heard. So, USPs trying to cause a dent if possible. Config, though, should make light work of them, I dare say, as he'll be spraying his AK off wildly. And uh, Glock should finish off Grim there. Didn't stand the chance, says this round. We'll end any second now, I promise you that. Just want to get this one out the way. This will be the bomb, surely. The smoke's going to fade after the bomb blows up. Oh, how's that? Thank you. We'll take that as well. 24 kills now for Blame. Strauss in the driver's seat of this one. Three rounds until they confirm map one. Well, there we have it. 13 to 8, touching distance now. Fang with the FAMAS. They are lacking some key bits of utility, mainly the kits. Helmet's also an issue against two silence M4s on the T side. They will be now insta gibbed if they take a headshot. No dinks allowed. I'd say the best round, the complexity of one, is where JT got that triple kill. That was a lovely round. Yeah, and that's that's the unfortunate factor of all this. So identifying there was 3B, a bit more A pressure now. Half all utility has been expended, and that's quite early. For a minute 27 on the clock without any real banana pressure, that's going to give Astralis a lot of information for free. It's just to put another smoke top of B, Henry. There's not even anybody in Banana. Blame yeah. is at the base of Banana. Uh, Floppy's already rifling through all of his utility. If I'm Blame, I'm saying, yo, boss, man. They've already used two smokes over here. Oh, the peek in. The dink's not bad. The pressure's here. Dink could be false info, though, because it didn't actually give dink damage. They only takes later now. They have to go now. It's just going to be floppy to defend. He's playing in front of the smoke, and this is going to get a little bit awkward for him. So there it is. A chance, though, JT. I don't think he'll be given another one. The smoke will go down, and spraying through the smoke. They're hoping for the best, but do they just have to give in? Remember, they had no kits in this one, Chad, so better to save the weapons, I would say. And that's... Uh, Boring conclusion for complexity fans because they don't even get a look into the round. Just one kill. As you mentioned, Floppy didn't really have much to defend with. Burned from his utility pretty early on. Gets taken down. An awkward interaction there. Maybe if he gets one, one and a half, they could justify going for it. But if fact, he gets nothing at all, they're better off just trying to take the weapons into the next round. 
think one of the, the other issues with the complexity is once upon a time, if you were playing against Glaive and Zip on Inferno and Nuke, the series was already over. True. So the fact we have Nuke up next as well, with the confidence like this, with how Blame and Config are playing right now, let's assume that they don't slow down. It's going to be real issues as we move into home turf for the Danes. Well, there we have it. They'll at least keep four rifles up on a bit of the FAMAS. They'll have another chance to buy some more utility this time. Hopefully a couple of kits so they can justify some of these retakes. And uh, haven't seen much in the form of aggression on the CT side like we were seeing from Astralis. They haven't really got comfortable yet, to be fair. Only winning the pistol and the third and fourth round, four spy follow-ups. No real gun rounds going in favor of the North Americans so far. I'll be back on the AWP here for number 23, getting to the bookend of this first map. How about best of three? The pick of complexity, not going too well at this stage. Chad mentioned they had a couple of impressive rounds from individuals, but lacking in gun rounds in total. That, that grim piece was, was nice. I don't know if he said it or if they cut it. Right. It's like we took a map off the best team in the world who didn't have the best player at the time. Yeah, they did leave that key bit of information out there. <laughs> was... like, Simple wasn't on the server and it was the best of one. But yeah, I, it's still confident. If you don't say so, it, it's still going to boost the confidence. You don't true. mention those parts. Well, this is JT again. And if he can just keep killing everybody, there might be a chance here for the in-game leader. Three on four, space. Well, they've got a bit to work with. Zip needs to hit this shot. He has a full bag of util that's now all for naught. So that is going to be a little bit of a stiff ending for him as Config wants to be the space maker here. We'll have to do a lot of work with that flash and through it. Good team play there from Complexity. This one isn't done yet. Yeah, I don't think we're expecting finally to get a whole lot done with the AWP. Definitely not, but uh, that can be the hardest round to find. And they're still with a full buy for now. And they've got one buy in the bank as well. So uh, here we go then. So maybe Complexity finding their footing, a bit of confidence after that one. Haven't got themselves an orb just yet. And uh, here we go, the aggression we were looking for. And Farley will make light work of the first player. That's Fang. He wants a bit more as well. Is he going to go through this smoke? No, falls back. Good call off here because now with this number advantage, just allow ooh, the round to play out. He will go for a banana pick. It looks like he's being instructed to do so. They're flashing him to fight for territory here. But there is no rush, realistically, now for Astralis. They can take their time. And I guess while this is happening, we can talk about uh, TC. I think he's the coach that smiles the most out of all coaches. Yeah, very, very kind smile. Always looks happy behind them. That's what you want to see. He smiles the most as a player, I would say. Yeah. Well, this is the round. If they push and die, uh, complexity is screwed. But the kills, they could change the script. And nobody seems too ready for this. Farley's orb does strike again, the push through. and. Now B should be open for business. The last two marooned on A on an island. Looking for Tom Hanks. That's a castaway reference, I believe. Right? Could have gone with Wilson, but I wanted to I went with Tom Hanks that way. No one no one can <laughs> No discrepancies it. there. We can know exactly what he's talking about. Tom Hanks was indeed the actor in that film. Had a big beard. Had a beard, and uh, I think he was suffering from a lot of different issues out there. Yeah. Cuts in his legs, illnesses. Couldn't but he's in coconuts, I believe. You get scurvy eventually. I Actually, do you get vitamin C from coconuts? I probably... I don't think you can survive on them forever, though. Like, you, you'd get some sort of uh, nutritional problems, I'd imagine. That's something that would happen to the pirates, right? On the boats with no, no you, vitamin C. They get scurvy. Take, take limes with them. That was yes, the thing. yes, that's the one. Limes would last a while, I believe, so... Well, we're educating you on things we don't really know, everybody, but we're That's all, really. It. That's just uh, the remnants of my, my education <laughs> coming through. That's we, about it. We do have a whole bunch of people who are, who are tweeting in. There's a whole bunch of tweets. Oh, really? Going I haven't actually yeah. checked it. Let's have a look. Um, somebody's having a burger. Unforgotten's having a burger right now. Uh, I got gifted a burger by Heaton for their birthday. Oh, that's nice. How does that work? I'm not sure. I don't know the details. Um, Dodge, he's watching at 10.46 p.m. Uh, while Dota qualifiers are going on, uh, he's getting his fix of Counter-Strike before bed. So, have a good night's sleep. There's a lot of people with attraction here. We'll, we'll have to read it in the break because uh, this game, I think it's coming to its logical conclusion. It looks like it. For a moment, there was about three rounds in the first half. So, wow, we're really onto something here. Mm. This could be a fantastic one. Complexity, keeping it even. But uh, as time goes on, you can see that distance is getting further and further away. Astralis just need one, and Complexity with a mishmash buy here for masses once again. Lacking key, pe key pieces of the utility setup, and Zipex, well, this is that one. He, he beamed that one, didn't he? This isn't going to go well for Config, I don't think. There's three prongs and the first strikes. 
I'm surprised at the amount of unsilenced down fours we're seeing on the board here as well. That's another talking point that is going to continue to, uh, well, not play Counter-Strike. I guess it is play Counter-Strike when that's all we seem to talk about. But there's a four on five available here. Avoid the nade damage down banana. A B finish, probably the best option. I don't hate it, Chad. I don't hate it at all because you have the man advantage really no matter what. Even if they cheat a player across, you've got four players going in. You're showing a little bit of presence here with the flashbangs. Now you're not going to rotate if you're a CD player for a good 10 seconds after receiving one of those. You're calling. There's at least one here on this side of the map. He could be apps, could be boiler. We're not sure. Either way, I'm flashed. And the B execution will be coming in momentarily. So blame out from up here as well. Can Molotov from some key positions, namely towards Emo. And uh, we'll see if he stays up there. Are they fully out of util on the B side? I don't see anything between JT or Floppy here. Now, Blame's just made steps. The rotation from Halzerk needs to be quick. He has nades to bail them out, but really needs to get a move on here. They're in trouble. It's a FAMAS at the back towards the pillar as well. Floppy trying to inflict any sort of damage he can. There's a decent flashbang, though. That's from Halzerk on the rotation. Throws up from Spawn, but the defending players go down. Back to a three on three, an even kill, and Halzerk makes himself known. He'll need some fortune here. A no-scope through the smoke is the only thing that will do, and there's no saving at this point, Chad. They have to go for it to survive here on Inferno. All right, well, the flash from Fang is going to be the way back in. That's been lobbed down. It's the Orpa Halzok that needs to be able to activate here from the Coffin's position, and he's already dead as a doorknob. Zippo have taken him down. Farley peeks out. He's gone. A two-on-two -two still as a nade lands at the feet here. They're just going to stand and fight. It's Zip to get this one done, and time is starting to tick further and further. Zip's under so much pressure. They're charging him down. Six bullets in the gun. He needs to get both kills here. And Zip, the clutch minister. Guess what? Oh, dear. Is there time for this? The clock comes out. Zip, he's going to do it. Rolling up after years.